do carbon plate super shoes really make all that much difference? Is there like a placebo effect? Are they worth the money? In this video, I'm gonna try and answer all those questions and a whole lot more. I've received so many requests from the viewers to cover this subject, so let's get into it and embrace the carbon. Thanks for tuning in people, it's Ed Mitzel now, Bud here. If you haven't done so already, help the channel to continue to grow and hit that 50k subs by clicking the subscribe button, but also clicking the bell for notifications too. So you're notified. Also it helps out a whole bunch too if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. Straight into it today guys, do carbon plate super shoes really make that much difference to performance? Do they give a placebo effect making you think they're having a huge difference when actually it's just you? Are they really worth your hard earned cash? I've received a ton of questions recently from the viewers on this very subject. Everybody wants to know, do carbon plate shoes really make a difference? Should they shell out and get themselves a pair? Are they gonna make a difference to people's pace if they're like a slower runner? Is it gonna affect their performance? Is it gonna injure them? Some people see these shoes as like this elite level sort of thing. And if they buy a pair and wear them, because they're not like an elite runner, they might get really injured or something. Do they help to limit fatigue as well across your training and racing? First up, I've worn a whole bunch of these shoes over the last few years, and I have to say they're not really like some totally wild, out there type of shoe. They're a running shoe with a few bells and whistles added in. I don't think they're massively different to some of the other stuff that's around. I can wholeheartedly say yes, they do make a difference in a wide range of ways as well. Those very soft foam shoes with carbon plates can limit the amount of fatigue you may feel across a race or training run. They seem also to lower the perceived and recorded effort to the runner and they can aid in recovery too, allowing you to get back to training a little bit quicker perhaps than you would have done before if you're wearing a standard running shoe. Perhaps if you run a really intense training effort, you'll find that the next day you just feel that a little bit better than you did before. So that's it really, I've answered the question. Thanks for watching. Only kidding, there's a bit more to discuss. It really isn't quite that simple though that yes, they make a difference. Why is it that they're making a difference? Have I got any sort of hard evidence to actually back up my theory? Where I've worn these shoes in training and for racing, I do feel that you need to integrate them into your training very carefully, using them once or twice within your weekly training schedule, perhaps sporadically at first until you become accustomed to them. I wouldn't advise on taking them out of the box and just using them forever more for every single run. Probably a bad idea. Yes, you might feel you can run faster and for longer, and you generally feel really great until you reach that that point where you've upped the effort level and your time on feet so much that you begin to go into that red zone. I think it's easily done and here's an analogy to sort of explain that more. Say there's a band that's performing at a venue and they're doing a sound check. They're at a reasonable level, you know, the guy that's doing the PA, the sound engineer is happy with the level. Everything can be heard, everything's in its right place. But as the night wears on, the band get a little bit more excited, the guitars go up, the drummer starts actually playing a bit harder, everything's getting louder until suddenly the PA system itself just isn't powerful enough to actually elevate and amplify the vocals over the top of everything else and it just gets lost. You end up with a terrible sound, you've kind of hit the red zone and there's nowhere else to go. What I'm trying to say is that if your engine itself, that sort of bass fitness isn't quite there, then I don't feel you're gonna get the best out of these shoes and the shoes won't get the best out of you. Those carbon plate super shoes I think literally lift up the threshold level somewhat. It might take you a little bit longer to hit that threshold level but when you do you really do and that might be the end of your race. So I think appropriate integration of these super shoes is what it's all about. In my opinion that is absolutely imperative to get the best out of them and get the best out of you too. Now, I think some of these super shoes are a little bit easier to integrate into your training and perhaps your racing than others. The Adios Pro 2, for example, was a really niche shoe. I can't see too many people wanting to use that on a daily basis. Some people found it insanely unstable. It was perhaps putting different pressures onto different areas of your body, your legs, your muscles than other shoes. 
and I think a few people got some problems there. I do read about people buying the Alpha Fly as well. I'm expecting that to just magically lower their times, increase their sort of top line paces, but suddenly they get shin splints because the shoe's just so compressive in the heel. It's vastly different to a lot of other shoes. So where I'm talking super shoes here, I'm not talking generally, they're all very different. I think the Adios Pro 3 and the Alpha Fly Next Percent 2, perhaps even the Vaporfly 3 as well, have all been tailored to appeal to a wider range of runners this time round. Some of the very first super shoes were very narrow affairs. They were built really for elite runners who are running mainly on their mid to forefoot. We've seen a big change in that over the last few years. Manufacturers have been increasing the width of the heel and the mid to forefoot section of those shoes as well. I believe that's in an attempt to expand the range of people that might be able to buy these shoes and get something out of them. Also means that they can obviously sell them to more people as well. I mean, that's very sensible, I suppose. If you're a shoe manufacturing company, you wanna make stuff that people wanna buy and can actually utilize. If you're making a very niche shoe, something like the Saucony Sinister, for example, well, we've seen what happened with that shoe. Not a whole load of people have bought it and it's already on a discount. Same with the SC Pacer, I suppose. You can't blame these companies, I suppose, but you do have to remember that people are still buying Air Jordan 1s now. That's mainly for the looks. And there are a lot of people out there that do buy running shoes because of the way they look. I mean, the Air Jordan 1 isn't the best basketball shoe to buy in 2023, but that doesn't stop people, does it? I think these new super shoes that have been released over the last year are still fantastic in terms of performance, though I think a few people will view them as sort of watered down versions of what came before. They're certainly more bulky than some of the previous versions and very much tailored to fit a wider range of runners in the community. So, have I got any evidence to sort of back all this stuff up? Well, yes, I have. In my training very recently i did a quick test over three runs a 30 minute effort at seven minutes 54 seconds per mile heart rate around about 132 beats per minute average in a temperature of 27 c 52 percent humidity oh my gosh that was hot in other words guys that was very very warm i then did a five mile effort in the same shoes about eight kilometers seven minutes 52 seconds per mile with a heart rate of 129 beats per minute average. That was in a temperature of 15 C, so a little bit crisper, a little bit cooler. Both of those runs were very much in my easy sort of pace zone, easy effort, and they were using the Vaporfly Next% 3 from Nike. Very soft heel here in this Nike shoe, and a very wide forefoot sort of area here. Certainly what you'd classify as a super shoe. Between those two runs, only a very marginal difference in terms of heart rate. It was a little bit elevated on that very hot run. I then did another run of six miles at eight minutes 12 seconds per mile pace in 12 c conditions so quite a bit cooler this time though we have an average heart rate of 128 beats per minute so pretty much exactly what i had on that second run there almost the same as the last effort but a clear 20 seconds slower per mile that run was in the nike air zoom pegasus 40 so react foam in that one no plate or anything just a couple of thinner zoom air units encapsulated into the midsole so a little bit cooler on that slower run so you'd assume that my heart rate wouldn't perhaps be as elevated though almost the same average heart rate with the pegasus 40 there against the other two runs that's something like 0.2 or 0.3 miles per hour faster but with the same heart rate easy maths rounding it all off that's about four percent difference in terms of sort of efficiency i suppose where have i heard four percent before yes only a small window of testing there but i think you'll agree where you're running in like 27 c up against like 12 or whatever it was the vaporfly does make it significantly easier and that's it like a sort of around about eight minutes per mile pace right so there's a lot of people out there that would suggest that you've got to run really fast to actually get some benefit from these shoes i'm telling you now that i don't think that's the case that's just some typical raw data from some of my recent runs now it could be similar for you it might be slightly different this shoe seems to work pretty well for me around about sort of marathon pace the shoe just seems to make things a little bit easier the muscles and the legs not quite so fatigued certainly the efficiency difference is there it's a about 4% with the same heart rate. It's a little bit better than some of those other firmer daily shoes. Though, 
is this a placebo effect? Am I merely just putting these shoes on and I feel that I can run better in them? Are the shoes making me adjust the way I'm running? Was I just pampering my feet and my body while wearing these shoes? Maybe I was enjoying myself a little bit more. Now you could say the other factor is, well, you ran the six mile effort in the Pegasus shoes early in the morning. When did you run the other effort? Well, that was after a really hard day at work, very demanding, I even was gonna just stay in and not bother to go out again, but I did and I felt absolutely fantastic running in those vapor flies. So all the factors were against me, yet still the heart rate and effort levels were comparable, I suppose, but I was 20 seconds per mile faster. Are they worth the money? That's another big question that people ask me all the time. Should they wait till they go to discount or try and pick them up second hand or something? I can't lie to you here. Some of these shoes are incredibly fragile. If you catch them like on a nail or a rock or something quite abrasive, some of the foams do start to tear and fall apart. Certainly the Vaporfly 4% original was less durable than the ones we've got now. I am quite impressed so far at the exposed foam in this shoe. It's holding up pretty well. The rubber, not so much in the forefoot. But it's looking pretty good, this one. Well, it's growing on me a little bit. A little bit. Adidas seem to utilize some sort of more durable formulas in their rubber that's actually causing the shoes to have a little bit of extra longevity. I just wish that Nike would utilize some Vibram rubber on the outsoles of the Alpha Fly and the Vapor Fly. I think then the shoes would stand the test on a light trail perhaps. It's just gonna boost the longevity of the shoes. So are they worth the money? I don't think the Alpha Fly Next Percent 2 is worth the money. It's extremely expensive. I think you could make a case for the Vaporfly Next Percent 3 being worth it. I would suggest trying to pick up the Vaporfly Next Percent 2 if you're getting into the carbon super shoe game. Though some people will say it's just not worth it. You can just train harder and get there. I've been training a lot and quite consistently over the last five years. I definitely feel they give me a little bit of a boost when I want to do one of those harder sessions or a race. What do you reckon then guys, are these shoes worth the money? Do they really deliver you some sort of performance gain? Is that performance gain actually in terms of your ability to recover quickly after these runs? Let me know your experiences wearing these super foam carbon plate shoes down in the comments. A quick musical interlude for you. When the weekends come around, certainly when it's nice and hot, I've been blessed with a living room that's quite cool. There's some wooden flooring and whenever I play some vinyl records in there, it just sounds absolutely fantastic. It's like the whole room's acting like a box, kind of amplifying the vibes coming from the record. Thus, I've been listening to one of my favorite recordings by Miles Davis. Flamenco Sketches is a beautiful track. So sparse at times, slowly builds up, really warm and mellow instrumentation here, allowing for Miles Davis to sort of sit on top of those things and really stand out, some real focus to his instrument. Incredible space, you can almost swim around between the instruments here, you can pick everything out. The drums are just the lightest touch. It's almost like a watercolor picture or something where the piano notes sound, they kind of drift down the canvas just very slowly. One of those tracks that sounds a little bit like a memory or something. Go and check it out, guys. You might think I've completely flipped my lid, but it's beautiful stuff. Miles Davis with Flamenco Sketches. Thanks for tuning in, people. It is always appreciated. Hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications. Also, give this video a thumbs up like. That helps massively. And also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you 